Hello, good afternoon to you all. My name is Susana Vaz Freitas and I'm a speech and language pathologist from Portugal that has been working in the last 20 years in the otorhinolaryngology service of Centro Hospitalar Universitario do Porto in Portugal. Today I'm going to talk to you about a laryngeal speech. This project was developed by, between me and a group of engineers and speech and language pathologists who wish to study more about European Portuguese laryngeal speech so that a speech training software can be developed and available and so laryngectomized patients can learn an laryngeal speech option. We started to collect and analyze the voice characteristics of a group of laryngectomized patients that had speech therapy in my hospital and in that group one of the cases had two forms of laryngeal speech used esophageal speech and a voice with a tracheoesophageal puncture. In the next minutes I will talk to you about the results from the analysis of the two forms of voice production in this same patient. The presentation is divided in four different parts. It starts with an introduction, followed by the explanation of the methods and design used in the investigation. Then I'll talk about the obtained results and finally the major conclusions. Laryngectomy is a surgical treatment frequent in patients with throat cancer at later stages, where the larynx is totally removed. It leads to voice loss, the disconnection between the airway and the mouth and nose, and the airway is directed to the neck and a stoma is created for breathing. Vocal restoration is mandatory and in mo most countries, patients learn to use uh, one or more of the communication options. The challenge commonly faced by patients across all options relates to the artificial quality of the sound produced that is very different from the natural pre-laryngectomy voice and individual to each patient. The distinctive difference of the lower intelligibility compared to the pre-laryngectomy can make it difficult for the patient to communicate effectively with others as it impacts overall intelligibility. This is particularly problematic when the conversation partner is unfamiliar with the patient or when communicating in more challenging environments, such as in background noise or on the telephone. As the larynx is completely removed, the communication options are limited to non-vocal communication using an artificial larynx, esophageal speech or tracheoesophageal speech. Each of these options is associated with an artificial sounding voice that is not noticeably different to the pre-surgery natural voice of the patient. Therefore, specific challenges to communication are encountered by these patients. I will describe the two options used by the studied case. Esophageal speech requires the patient to swallow, swallow or aspirate air via mouth and perform a belching-like action to vibrate the esophagus at the pharyngoesophageal segment and create sounds which are shaped in the mouth. It has no necessity to de of devices or limits the arm and the hand movements like the artificial larynx uh, does. Results in a sound that is low in pitch and short in duration of a maximum of three seconds because it depends of the mouth's capacity to retain and inject air into the esophagus, which it has a capacity of 80 millimeters. This speech option can be difficult to learn and master and studies point to a minimum of three months of training to use it correctly. The tracheoesophageal speech is the option of choice in most countries. It is associated to a surgery when a small fistula is created between the trachea and the esophagus and the voice prosthesis valve is placed. This can be done primarily in the moment of the laryngectomy or secondarily. The one-way nature of the voice prosthesis prevents food and drink passing from the esophagus into the airway. When the stoma is blocked, the air is directly um, uh, through the prosthesis by vibrating the pharyngoesophageal segment and then shape the sound in the mouth. To achieve voice, patients can occlude the stoma with their thumb or use a hands-free device, as it shows in the left uh, picture. Sound quality is still rough, 
low in pitch and unclear compared to the normal voice production. However, tracheoesophageal speech has been associated with the highest level of intelligibility for speakers, speech fluency and naturalness compared to the other approaches. Voice can be acquired in the first weeks after the prosthesis insertion with a high level of success and the associated complications with which are referred by different studies as between 15 and 25 percent and its costs are considered ne negative aspects of this speech option. Our aim uh, were, was to determine for a given subject what are the acoustic differences between his esophageal speech and his tracheoesophageal speech. Patient is a male with 58 years old in the time of the surgery, uh, that is a European Portuguese speaker submitted to total laryngectomy in a central hospital in the Oporto area. He is now retired, but worked for 35 years in the municipal water company and underwent 33 sessions of cervical radiotherapy. The clinician who did the speech restoration was the same in the two communication options and the ethical committee approval was obtained and the informed consent was gathered. We use a microphone Audis TR40A and a Behringer Euphoria UM2 with an audio USB interface. Signals were recorded at 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit, in a room with a sound level below 40 dB SPL, but with no acoustic uh, treatment. Distance from the mouth to the microphone was 10 centimeters, and that analysis was done using European Portuguese oral vowels A, E, and U. For maximum phonation time calculation, we used the isolated produ production. For acoustic voice analysis, we used vowels that were extracted from a reading task in syllables with association to occlusive consonants P, T, and K in the words pataka and topical. Acoustic voice analysis was performed with Praat software to obtain first formant, second formant, fundamental frequency, jitter, shimmer, and harmonic to noise ratio. The speech samples were pre-processed with Cool Edit Pro 2.1 to, to do the vowel segmentation. We also use a high pass filter and also did the down sampling. The analysis in terms of statistical analysis was performed with the statistical package for social sciences and this descriptive and statistical analysis and inferential statistics were used um, with a 95% confidence interval. We found statistically significant differences between um, the esophageal speech and the tracheoesophageal speech for the acoustic measures of fundamental frequency was higher for esophageal speech and also in the parameter harmonic to noise ratio, which was higher in tracheoesophageal speech. Even though there is a huge difference between the uh, two uh, types of communications, almost half the value between, between them, this is not compatible with the psychoacoustic perception. So we thought that it could be related to the Fletcher Munson curve and did a new analysis after excluding the outliers of the speech signal, which obtained also a fundamental frequency with the stronger statistical significant dis difference. In addition, maximum phonation time measures were also statistically different, and this result is expected because tracheoesophageal speech uses the lungs to support voice production. And in esophageal speech, the air is from the mouth or reservoir. The higher maximum phonation time also influences the better fluency and speech intonation, typical uh, uh, in the tracheoesophageal speech. In conclusion, the obtained results confirm the difference between the two communication options and the best qualitative and quantitative outcomes are attributed to the tracheoesophageal puncture speech. However, the patient identifies himself and says that his natural voice occurs when using the esophageal speech. We assume that the personal identification and naturalness of the obtained voice can be associated to adherence and motivation for therapy, influencing its outcomes and efficacy. Thank you so much for your attention.